Yo, what is up, YouTube? It's your boy 321 Jackman Productions coming at you with the reaction to. Not really a fucking reaction. Fuck. But this is the NFL. My thoughts of the NFL draft with quarterbacks, man. I needed to drop this video just to get my thoughts out there because sports is something that. I really want to pursue in my future life, so I got to start getting this shit early, getting my sports knowledge out there early, you feel me, and we're going to just let y'all know how I feel, so just to give you a little rundown in the past, I have called Patrick Mahomes greatness, I have. Boy, if you don't get When it was his draft, like, y'all can ask any of my real friends, bro. Like, I called his greatness. Like, that's just a fact. So, don't be surprised if I call a future MVP, a future Super Bowl MVP, because Patrick Mahomes, you feel me? But, yeah, we got a lot of quarterbacks this draft. This is, like, a basically a six-man draft for the quarterback position. We got a lot of guys that you could get, a lot of different people you could get. A lot of versatility you see here. So, obviously, the first two guys that come to the head, Joe Burrow, Tua Tagaloa, whatever the fuck his name is. And Joe Burrow and Tua's stats are just undeniable. They're undeniable. You got 60-6, and six, one of the best offensive seasons ever with Joe Burrow. And then you got the 32-3 and three with Tua, but then he, he didn't play as much as the year before when he had 43-6, and six, you feel me? So it, it's a lot of things that play with Tua with the injury concerns. But Joe Burrow, he had undeniably one of the best seasons ever in the college, in the college game with 5,600 yards, too, with that fucking championship. That was dope as fuck, yo. So, Joe Burrow, he has to go to the Bengals. He has to face off the Steelers two times a year, and that just might not be good for his career when you have to go against TJ Watt, Stephen Tewitt. So, we could see a lot of things happen with that, with the Pittsburgh Steelers playing him two times a year, and if he could succeed in Cincinnati. And then, Tua. Where is Tua going, yo? I feel Tua has to go Miami. I feel Tua has to go Miami. Like, the... The narrative has been way too written up for me, bro, to just go get Herbert. And Tua versus Herbert, man, if you're going to take Herbert strictly because you're concerned over Tua's injury problems, that's just not how y'all need to look, yo. I know y'all are Miami. Y'all like them draft picks, so if y'all were scared that Tua was hurt and y'all didn't and y'all couldn't play him or some or whatever the situation is, sit him a year and then boom, you got a really potential nice quarterback playing the second year and you get a nice draft pick. I know y'all like draft picks there in Miami. I know y'all do. Y'all traded away a star, Minica Fitzpatrick, to my Pittsburgh Steelers. I know y'all like the draft pick, so y'all got to get to a man. Y'all can't get Herbert for a dude. Herbert, let's just slide right into Herbert. Herbert's one of them guys. He didn't show improvement that much in his college career from his junior to senior season. There was basically no... No difference, and that's just not something I like. When I'm looking at stats and I see no improvement or just the same shit, it's not something that I'm going to so I can say, oh, I'm spending a top five pick on you. I'm spending a top ten pick on you. I mean, <clears throat> we can see it because we've seen the Giants in the past have, like, a lot of looks on Daniel Jones, and they took him at six. So, Herbert, if you take Jones at six, you definitely take Herbert at six, too. So, Chargers, he's – I think um, Herbert needs to go to the Chargers, bro, because – all, the next guy that I'm talking about is Jordan Love, yo. So, with the Chargers, the two quarterbacks that have been linked to there really are Justin Herbert and Jordan Love, right? And just comparing Herbert and Love, you got Jordan Love who fucking had no improvement at all. What I was saying before, he had no improvement. He was 20-17 and 17 after a 32-6 and six season. So, looking at that... And you're trying to bring that dude to be your franchise quarterback. I think they, the Chargers have to go with size, like Phillip Rivers. They have to get J Justin Herbert. He has the stats. He has the arm. He's what the Chargers need, really. I don't think Jordan loves what they need. Because talking more about Jordan Love, this dude's been getting Patrick Mahomes praise, my guy. Patrick Mahomes praise, my guy. What besides the arm strength reminds you of Patrick Mahomes? I don't remember Patrick Mahomes throwing 20 and 17, bro. Don't disrespect Patrick Mahomes, the MVP, the Super Bowl MVP. That's disrespectful, okay? That was my that was my call on greatness, and y'all are comparing this bum. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Chill, chill. But goddamn, guys. Jordan loved to Patrick Mahomes. There's, I can't compare it. I can't compare it. 20 to 17. Unless this man automatically just hits the magical button and switches back to 2018, his other season. What's the what's the praise on this guy? Because right after Eason, we're gonna be talking about Jacob Eason. I meant fuck. Right after Jordan Love, we're gonna be talking about Jacob Eason. And Jacob Eason is personally my most underrated player coming into this draft, bro. Jacob Eason, he has one of the best arms in the draft. He was playing on Washington State. He was hurt his junior year. And he had a really underrated season. When you look, did good against teams that did good too. And some of his interceptions, they were just bullshit. They weren't his fault. He was playing with not the best group of people. And then when you see guys with Joe Burrow and Tua and Herbert, like they, they had better situations. And that same goes to Jordan Love. Jordan Love wasn't in the best position also. But with those 17 interceptions, I'm, th I'm thinking it was... What, um, nine interceptions that were his fault, ESPN said? Nine interceptions? So, if that's the case, even if it's above half of those interceptions that were your fault, that's a problem, man. So, Eason, you automatically have more than under half the interceptions from Love, so that's a good thing. And he could have played his senior year, because he, yeah, it was his junior season last year, but he decided to go to the draft. And then another guy that's really underrated and I don't feel like it's getting talked about a lot is Jake Fromm. But Jake Fromm, personally, all I'm not going to lie. All these other quarterbacks, I've done my evaluation. I've watched them, but I just never spent the time to watch Jake Fromm. I, I watched Jake Fromm last year, going into the last year's draft, because I thought that he might have went to the draft, like called in, but nah, he went back to college. So Jake Fromm, I feel like just personally seeing Jake Fromm and looking at his stats, he has 24 and 5, 30 and 6, 24 and 7 his last three years. Those are pretty good stats, yo. And I feel like if the Bears, you bring in the Bears in this situation, the Bears have not done too well at the quarterback situation in the past years of their franchise. And to make up for that, I feel like you've got to take in Jake Fromm, bro. I feel like a Mitchell Trubisky and a Jake Fromm quarterback race could be fucking amazing. I feel like that could be really good for Trubisky. I feel like that could be really good for Fromm. Maybe Trubisky could teach him a couple valuable things in the NFL. If he knows any, but yeah, I mean, Jake Fromm to Bears, that makes perfect sense to me. You could see Jake Fromm to a team that's like with an older quarterback and they're maybe wanting to just be ready for when he retires. And Colts could be a team like that in, in their franchise now with Phillip Rivers. But the last quarterback, y'all counted, bro. I, I think y'all might have counted. It was five, yo, but we got one more. We got one more. We got Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts who's also in the Jake and Boat. Very underrated, yo. He doesn't get the praise he deserves, and I feel like the reason for that is is maybe because of the junior season when he was sitting back up in Alabama, and that's why I feel like it was perfect for him to go to Oklahoma, bro. For him to go to Oklahoma, that really got gave him a chance to like get that starting role again for the first time in a year. So after he got that starting role, he fucking blew shit up. He was probably in the he was in the Heisman race for sure, and he had 3,800 yards to 32 and eight with 1,300 rushing yards and 20 touchdowns. So if you're an NFL fan and you've been following the past two seasons, hearing those stats. You're thinking of Kyler Murray, you're thinking of Lamar Jackson, and just for like another one of those examples that weren't in those two years, you're thinking of Russell Wilson. You're thinking of that quarterback who has multiple traits and they could run it and throw it. They're a dual threat, and Jalen Hurts fits that. And that's been the recent trend in the recent years for NFL Rookie of the Year, NFL MVP. Like on my NFL MVP pick is Kyler Murray, yo. So if the trend follows, you have Kyler Murray as MVP because that's what happened with Lamar Jackson his second year. So it's going to be Kyler Murray's second year. You're going to have him pushing for MVP this year. And then you're going to have Hurts go his rookie year, put, it, put in a pretty good year. And then he should be on pace to get MVP if Murray got MVP. 
Hurts fits the recent trend model, and he fits that common day, modern day quarterback. You feel me? He has the improvement of his career. Every year he improved over guys like Herbert. Herbert didn't show much improvement. Love didn't show improvement. But you got a guy like Hurts. He showed improvement, and he showed that trait of him that he's just going to get better and better. So when you're talking about Hurts going in the third, fourth round, that's a sleeper. I haven't really heard fourth round. It's probably like mostly um, second to third round. And if Pittsburgh were to take a guy like Hurts, I would be fucking ecstatic. I would get a Hurts jersey for sure because to see the Steelers, if they could switch up like their old offense with Hurts and have the offense be like built around him, that could be deadly. We've seen what Baltimore did with Lamar Jackson. So two guys that the Steelers have been linked to are actually Jacob Eason and Hurts, also with the Colts and the Patriots. So those two guys are very, like I said, they're the underrated quarterbacks, and that's why you see these historic franchises like Colts and Patriots and Steelers a couple of days before the draft start to build up their their like for those quarterbacks because these dudes like love like these teams are trying to remodel what the Chiefs did with Patrick Mahomes. You're trying to force this shit on Jordan Love. Jordan Love is not no Patrick Mahomes, bro. He's not no Patrick Mahomes. And I hope he proves me wrong because if he proves me wrong, then that means amazing football that I can watch. So that's just my opinion on jo um, on Jordan Love. I feel like he's the biggest dude that people are like hyping up. I feel like he's the most hyped up that's not going to live up. I feel like he'll be the bust out of the group. And I feel like Jake Fromm could surprise a lot of people because he's that one out of the six that I just feel like doesn't have that much attention around. And you just don't know what a guy like him is going to do with his stats. He has very potential to fuck shit up this draft. So, yeah, man, that's it, bro. If you like the video, leave a like down below. Share with your friends. If you want more content like this, leave it down below. I'm out.